that. I was testing earlier today and I clicked. I think, uh, I I think, like it wasn't doing anything. I think we're good now. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for coming by. So this is a first time for me on my channel. Uh, please let me know if everything is coming through. Okay, sound wise, video wise. Um, Chad and I look fabulous over here to ourselves. So uh, how about you, Chad? You're looking good or what? I, I get no complaints. I've got a nice <laughs> screen with, with you on it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's coming through to everybody else watching. And uh, yeah, we just Chad and I uh, talked many times over the internet uh, pre Nam uh, 2019, where we just recently uh, met in person for the first time. And uh, I, I think I like the way way that Chad uh, explained it the best. Uh, many nights we, we we share a love of uh, UFC fighting and whiskey, and uh, many a night we would uh, be uh, simultaneously watching a fight while sipping whiskeys. And uh, I think uh, uh, Chad put it best that we would sit and solve the world's problems. You know. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, the next morning they were all back. All yeah. I don't know. I, I it's it's a really strange thing. I don't. I guess we weren't doing a good enough job, but. Uh, at the time. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we had a great, great opportunity finally at NAM this year to hook up and uh, do many dinners and many drinks and uh, many functions together, which was really fabulous. I had a great time. And, and with the whole clan, my buddy Dean, uh, yeah. Johnny, uh, Johnny Lee, Steve Sterlachi, Brian Adams, we just had a, a I, 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 speaking for myself, I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys to share a weekend with and make some some amazing memories with. It was a lot of fun. It really was. And, and we've all, you know, our, our chat group, you know, we all stayed in touch. And, and it, I think it was Brian that said, you know, if he doesn't hear from one of us in, in a couple of hours, he's afraid something's wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's calling the authorities to see if everything's OK. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, and the, the fun thing, yeah, I know we, we share a lot of interest of all this being guitar players, but it, it really did just feel like we got out there and it was, it was just like hanging out with your best buddies from, from way back. And it was a lot of fun. Well, that, that's what I think we all said is everybody got together and within probably a minute and a half, everybody was insulting each other and laughing, you know, with each other and at each other. Right. And I think, you know, you have a good group of guys when everybody can do that and nobody's nose is at a joint. And it, it was just it was just a great, great time, you know, so it was, it was. inappropriate things were said within the first five minutes of this, game. which which is great. So, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to follow my buddy Eric Broadbent's lead here because he is I got to give a shout out to him. He is the master at the live stream. Do, do you not agree? Hands down. There's not even a, a number one contender. I felt so bad because I didn't have a good intro. I didn't have any of this fancy stuff that he has. And he's so professional. I'm just going to look like this schmuck doing this live stream. So, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, let's go to the, let's go to the chat and see who's joining us just like Eric does. So thanks buddy. I appreciate you uh, giving me the, uh, the lesson. So let's start at the top here and we have Eric. Hey Eric, thanks so much for coming by buddy. And uh, Carlo Santon. Uh, Carlo, I had a great opportunity with Eric to meet up with Carlo uh, for the Generation X concert a number of months ago. So I got to have dinner and drinks and uh, share a concert with Carlo. So thanks for stopping by, Carlo. I really appreciate that, buddy. Brian Adams, our buddy Brian's here. Hey, Brian. He knows we're uh, Hey, good. And Steve Sterlachi's here. I know he has a rehearsal tonight. So uh, I hope he's sticking around. And Nocturnal Butterfly, Eric's. Well, I'll say better half just because I have to, Eric. Sorry about that. No offense, but uh, thanks so much for coming by. Single coil lover. Frank Rashad's here. Hey, Frank. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Yep. And uh, who else? Who else? Robert Appel. Thank you, Alexander Belleville. Guitar Lessons 365 song. Thank you, guys, for stopping by. I really appreciate cool. it. So, Very yeah, Steve, Steve says he's here for a brief appearance, so that's awesome. Thanks, buddy. Oh, Steve, before you go, buddy, I just a little inside joke. I got a mug here for you. Just in case you uh, you want to want to get one of those, I thought you might like that. Aaron Short, stop by. Thanks for stopping by, Aaron. Appreciate it, buddy. So Chad and I were talking at Nam over uh, many, like I said, many drinks and many dinners. And Chad is the Variax guy, as far as I'm concerned. I have never touched a Variax. 
I had, oh, actually, I shouldn't say that. Actually, the, when, when the first time Eric uh, Broadman and I met in person was at my studio here, he came over uh, because he had uh, a, um, a power cab and we decided to do a power cab video together, which was really cool. So he brought his Variax over and I had about five minutes with it plugged in and I was just kind of going, what the heck? I couldn't get my head around all this and couldn't figure it out. But anyways, a couple days ago, this fine fella. Very cool showed up on my doorstep. I think it was lost. I think it was supposed to go to Chad Husky's house, but it took <laughs> a wrong turn and crossed the border north and ended up here. So, um, sorry, Chad. That's all right. I got a couple. So, right. Yeah. So, so I'm sitting here and for basically three days now, I've been staring at it going, what does it do? Right. Yep. Does it, what is it? I, I mean, plays, it seems to play a G chord that works. Right. But, um, so yeah, so I thought, you know what, here's a perfect time for us to implement, uh, our plan of talking more Variax because honestly you guys, and, and in the, in the, uh, description below, I want you guys to go and I have the link to Chad's YouTube channel, go and subscribe to that. He's, he's using, as you're going to hear from him in a moment, I'll stop blathering on and on and on and let him get to it. But, uh, uh, he, he knows everything about this. He has amazing things set up, uh, integrated with his Helix and I am a total newbie to this and I'm just learning. Uh, and I can't wait to hear what he has to tell us about this and hopefully we can get that screen sharing thing working so we can see what yeah, you yeah. have going. Yeah, no problem. Um, and what? thank you for the kind words. Um, oh no, absolutely. So <clears throat> what, uh, I'll do one second and share, I have workbench up and I'll, I'll share that. Um, but really quickly, just for uh, some people probably saw me on the Helix Hour and I did kind of a lot of this stuff, just kind of demonstrating what the guitar can do. But for anyone that hasn't seen it or is not familiar with it, I'm just going to run through a few things that um, what, you know, things is capable of tones it can get and so forth. I've got a patch set up with snapshots. It When you combine Helix and Variax and have the snapshot control, it is just it's a dream for live gigging. I mean, it's an absolute dream. So um, I was I was telling you last week we're doing the band I play with. We're doing a um, we're doing like the intro to when the levee breaks going right into another song. Um, so this first kind of sound example, it's open. Well, I know the song I think is an F, but we're doing the next song in E. So it's open E um, with a little bit of flanging on it. And then I can hit a snapshot and go right into the rhythm sound. So I'm going to turn my mic down for just a second so we don't get any strange dissonance from the strings. But yeah, for sure. As you can hear I'm able to just quickly snap back and forth between being open tuning and standard tuning. Um, you know, same thing if I wanted to do an open G sound. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to. So the cool thing too is with having the snapshots, say you're playing a song like that in open G, it comes to the solo and, you know, I don't know if you're like me, I have a really hard time reconstructing my scales on the fly if I'm in an open tuning. Um, some people can do it. I'm not one of them. So the cool thing about this is I can be in an open tuning, hit a snapshot and be right to my lead sound in standard. So I can go back to playing scales, everything I know, all that sort of stuff. Um, you can also do, um, you know, it's not something you'd record with, but if you're doing live looping in a pinch, you can do some bass sounds. So, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> that's it's, wild. <laughs> it works. Um, and then also, you know, acoustic. <laughs> Which is, I mean, to me, it's in a live setting, it's just great. You know, um, if you're recording and have a Martin and some nice mics, yeah, do that. But um, I mean, this is just perfect. And then you can also, you know, apply. <clears throat> alt tuning to the acoustic as well, obviously. So here's something in drop D flat. That's 
that sounds great, great, man. Thank you. So that, there's just a kind of little intro just to say, hey, here's what it can do with some practical applications. So what is so cool? Like last last year, at, uh, sorry, not last year at NAM, but two years ago. I wasn't at last year's NAM, but two years ago, before I was even a Helix owner, before I knew anything about any, I was actually a Kemper user at the time. Oh, and wow. I stopped by the, the the Line 6 booth and I actually caught Stevic up on stage doing his very yeah. thing. And I was just going, what the heck is this? This, this must be a wizardry or sorcery or black magic or something that he's up to. And uh, but it's the cool. And his his demo of it is just so cool, right? He's uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It, what it's he's doing far with out. I mean, his stuff with 12, 12 foot ninja is just amazing. And um, you know, I think about he, you know, he's really pushing the the fringes of what what you can do with the technology. Um, you know, I'm, I kind of think about. Yeah, I'm kind of doing like the every man what what a typical gigging guitar player might go to. He, he's just a wildly creative person. I mean, it's, it's really impressive to see what he does with it. And that's really what this is doing now is it's blowing the doors wide open on possibilities, right? I mean, uh, I, I'm looking at it now, you know, and the funny thing is, is over the last, you know, year, I've had numerous messages where people are saying, hey, can you dial this in for the Variax or that? And I'm like, yeah, I would love to take a shot at it, but I don't have a Variax and never used it. So I don't even know what's going on with it. But I'm yeah. looking at it now for dialing in videos for those who have Variax where, yeah. you know, you know, when you create a patch on the Helix and the big complaint is always that somebody is now playing it with a different guitar, exactly. right? And it's going to sound different. And then ultimately, the, the guy who made the preset gets blamed in one way or the other, you know, because uh, why doesn't it sound good on it? You know, and you go, well, sorry, man, I, I played it with P90s and you're playing it with, you know, a Rickenbacker, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, it's exactly and that, so that, it sort of gets rid of one of those variables, maybe where, where some point I'm thinking like there's a lot of times people ask me to dial tones in and I don't actually own a guitar that's suitable. To really dial that tone in, right? So I'm thinking this is kind of a cool thing now is that you could actually go in and create a guitar in Workbench, which you're going to show us, I guess, in a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, that's going to be closer to maybe the guitar in question, right? Which right. is going to maybe again take away some of those variables and get that preset working uh, in more people's hands right out of the gate, right? Yeah. So I did a, um, a show last year. Um, it was basically we just did, um, sorry, my phone's buzzing there. Um, we just did the cult and, you know, Billy Duffy uses a lot of those big hollow body guitars. Um, he uses, um, he always uses a dual amp setup like a Marshall. I think now he's a Friedman with the JC 20 kind of running in stereo. So you kind of get the clean and dirty mixed. And I was literally, I have a, a, a video up on my channel with, with presets and all that, but I was able to literally dial it in exactly and be able to use this because I don't own any hollow body guitars and, you know, I could do the Les Paul thing, but, you know, if, if you have the tools to get it exact, then why not, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah you're you're spot on with, with being able to dial it in, and, and that way, yeah, you, you eliminate those variables for people who have very access, they can just, they can jump right on it, and at that point, that they've got every part of your signal chain. Just missing... The fingers, yeah. I guess. Uh, <laughs> so. At that point, you know, you can say, okay, well, maybe you just don't sound good. <laughs> well, no, and I mean, that is the other thing, right? It's, it's interesting. I did a dialing in video last week um, for a Warren Haynes style tone. And the way that that yeah. came up for some of you guys who may have seen that was our online buddy, Chris Robertson from Blackstone Cherry, sent me a private message on Facebook one day. And he said, uh, they toured with Government Mule last year. And uh, he said it was just this unbelievable treat to watch Warren every night. And he says, did you ever think about doing a dialing in for that? And I said, I probably feel stupid that I didn't because I should have. Yeah, you know, I should do that. And he says specifically the song Brand New Angel by Government Mule. And so I listened to it and him and I went back and forth. I sent him, I, I did a really fast preset and he was like, sounds a little bit bright on my system. But then again, I'm using, he was using a, a PRS McCarty model. I was using my Yamaha Red Star. Yeah. And we went back and forth. He sent me something back uh, that he had dialed in, which was kind of dark on my system, you yeah. know, and then ultimately the final product, I went a totally different direction when I had more time with it. But it yeah. just shows you. And we, we got in that conversation where we're like, you know what, ultimately him and I could both plug into the exact same rig with the exact same guitar and everybody's going to hear a completely different thing come out of it. Right. 
That's true. And tone is subjective. Um, and I do think a lot of tone is in the hands. You know, I heard uh, Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains tell a cool story. They were, they opened for uh, Van Halen. Uh, so probably during the 90s, I'm imagining it have to be. But um, he said Eddie came down and played through his rig and uh, sound like Eddie Van Halen. You know? <laughs> well, there you go. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there is definitely something to getting things dialed in. I mean, you know, you could plug it doesn't I mean, you know, if you plug into a pig nose and, and you're not going to sound like a Marshall. But uh, I think the, the gear and the guitars and the Helix have gotten to a point where, you know, it's a pretty level playing field. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, you had to have a lot of money to get pro level tone. And now, you know, I'm so grateful. I'm, I carry this and the Helix uh, and that's it. That's what I go to a gig with. Okay. So I'm not the first person to say this either. And you can tell me if, if you agree, but there's a downside to it in that I can't spend more than five minutes in a music store now. I, well, you know, we just, we're talking about, we just got back from Nam. I've never been less interested in gear. And it and that's, that's you know, Candyland of gear. And I'm walking around going, I, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't. I don't need that. Um, I, I hear you, man. Let's get. Where are we going to dinner? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Where where can, where can we get a beer around here? Is there a? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go hang out somewhere. Well, you know what's funny? I got a, a really cool delivery coming tomorrow. And I'll give this company a plug because they've been really cool to deal with. And I think I was mentioning this to you earlier tonight. When the most exciting thing I came across at NAM was a pedal board design, like an, an actual physical pedal yeah. board to mount things on. Uh, you know that the technology has kind of gone the right way to replace yeah. the things we've used in the past. So I, I'm, I'm taking delivery of a Temple Audio pedal board tomorrow. Anybody who wants to check it out, I, the web's just, just Google Temple Audio. I think they've done the pedal board right now versus a lot of the other designs that have been used. I'm gonna be doing some full videos and whatnot on it and building a pedal board around the HX Stomp with, uh, some of the products from uh, our, our mutual buddy, Paul Shedden from, uh, yep. from Mission yep. Engineering. Paul's such a, a sweetheart of a guy. What a, what an awesome fella. Yeah. And yeah, he makes some he great, yeah, he's, and he makes some great products. So I'm gonna be doing a good pedal board build with that, but I'm, I'm really excited to get this tomorrow. But it's pretty sad that when the most exciting thing at NAMM for me was a pedal board, yeah. you know, this thing that does nothing but hold our crap. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. and, 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 you know. You know, the funny thing is now new gear means new firmware. Like that's, that's the new, you know, instead of going to the store and buying something, it's like, oh, new firmware, I have new toys to play with. You know? And you literally get like, like $10,000 worth of stuff uploaded into your yeah. Helix overnight, right? Exactly. Well, you know, one firmware update had the train wreck amp and I think that amp they pay like, or it's worth like 30 grand. I don't know if it was a loaner or what, but uh, it's like, you know, your pedal just got a $30,000 amp put in it for free <laughs> to totally crazy i know and, and it's it's like literally christmas morning right every yeah. time that that happens and you just you just sit there going oh boy oh boy oh boy i can't wait to see what what we're yeah. getting and now we know in 2.8 yes. i'm i i mean I, it sounds again really ridiculous but i'm most happy with the fact that i'm finally getting an adjustable uh high and low shelf eq which sounds yeah. pretty pretty pathetic but man i am so no. pumped about that i can't wait it's gonna be so no. cool. I mean, from doing doing recording, I mean, EQ and compression. I mean, it that's that's the main thing. Absolutely, know, being able yeah. to have that. Um, talking about firmware, I remember. You know, I, I've been playing Variac since '05, and I remember when version 2.0, the HD firmware update, and the new X, the uh, new Workbench came out. Um, I actually left work early. <laughs> 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 like the the update went live at like two in the afternoon or something and i saw it and i'm like okay here are the minimum things i have to get done and i'm out of here i've got to go you know go home and update my very axe do you have like an <laughs> autopilot setting on the popcorn makers that you can just kind of like <laughs> well thankfully at this point um i i use a company that does it's called like a co-packer it's it's carolina fine snacks and uh so now i have a little more flexibility um i can kind of you know, some days I can get going for a few hours and then some days I'm still there till 11, 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Actually, be before we go any further about any of this nonsense guitar equipment and Variax <laughs> and Helix stuff, we need to put a good plug in. Go ahead and tell people where they can get your absolutely phenomenal popcorn that I, I had the uh, great uh, opportunity to try finally at the uh, Line 6 booth this year. Thank you. Well, the, the name of the company is Chad's Carolina Corn. That's the web address, just chadscarolinacorn.com, all one word. 
Um, if you live if you live on the eastern part of the United States, there's a where to buy on the website. Uh, there's a good chance there's probably something nearby, but you can also order directly from the website. Um, and uh, we ship pretty much anywhere in the continental U.S. Uh, don't do international shipping. Um, it just it's not cost effective. People don't want to pay three times what they're paying for the product to get it shipped to them. So uh, but I'll always you know, we're always working to get get more distribution farther out and farther out. But yeah, so jazzcarolinacorn.com, check it out. And uh, for friends on Facebook, feel free to shoot me a message if you have any any interest or questions about it. And um, yeah, that's, that's what pays for the guitar strings these days. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who hasn't tried it, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. And they come in these great single serving bags that are like just big that you just pour into your mouth, I think is how it goes, isn't it? Like that one guy at the, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of an inside joke. You know what, Chad, let's do this. Let's go back over. I'm going to take another cue from uh, my buddy, Eric, and we'll go back to the, the chat. Okay. And then and then we'll come back and maybe you can do a screen share yeah, and absolutely. give us kind of a guided tour of maybe Workbench and how you would go about creating a guitar sound in Variac, since that's apparently what we're here to talk about. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So live chat, I have no idea where I left off. I'm an amateur at this, but uh, let's see. Uh, Curtis Pear. Hey, Kurt, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you're still here. I got to meet uh, Kurt at NAM. That's awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Alec Bourne. Thank you. Paulie D. Thank you guys for stopping by. Scott Fuhr. Paul Terrio. Hey, Paul. How's it going, buddy? Appreciate you stopping by to listen in. Uh, Terrence Weinberg. Um, there's this Brian Adams fella again, still hanging out, stalking us uh, here. So yeah, it is. Didn't he write some songs back in the eighties or something? Yeah, I think uh, "Run to You" maybe. That yeah, uh, summer '69, something like that. But oh, I got to give a special, special shout out to my buddy Bane Rocks here. That's Eric Jr. Thanks cool. so much for stopping by, Eric. Eric was uh, just an absolute joy to hang out with on our trip. Uh, Eric, Eric Jr., myself, and my good friend Dean Croker from uh, who's been a lifelong buddy from back in my hometown, but we live really close now. Uh, we got to fly down uh, to NAMS together. We were on the same flights and we had a disaster of travel going down with canceled flights and whatnot. But Eric Jr. was just a joy to hang out with and he had a great, great uh, show uh, from, from our uh, discussions over breakfast and whatnot. So he was just a joy to hang out with. So that was awesome. Thanks so much for stopping by Eric Jr. Appreciate it. But, better than average. And, uh, of all our group at NAM, Eric Jr. was maybe the most mature out of all of us. Oh, he was by far the most mature out of all of us. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's that's not even a, not even close. And I got to give a, a real shout out here. Eric uh, just sent me a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. That's really nice, yeah, man. Uh, Andrew Butcher. We have Kurt Pear, uh, Dagan Haddad. Thank you guys all so much. Carlos Sands to her. Nick Kelly. Roberto Espinoza. Um, wow, this is great, guys. So thank you guys so much. Craig Tyler, thank you guys for stopping by. This is this is awesome. And again, thanks so much, Eric, for that support, buddy. Appreciate it. So, Chad, what do you think, buddy? Uh, let's do this. Maybe try. Hopefully, this doesn't like yeah. blow the whole system up and crash us or anything. But yeah. uh, I want to mention one thing before I screen share. Um, yeah. I just kind of want to take it from someone who maybe just gets the guitar uh, because this question gets asked pretty regularly um, on the Facebook group. When you first plug it up, it comes with a USB interface. Um, you, you plug the uh, Ethernet cable into the guitar, but you have to make sure you have the quarter inch uh, also plugged in to power the guitar on. Um, I've actually made that mistake in the very beginning, um, and then people ask about it a lot. They go, I've got it hooked up to the computer, and nothing's happening. So that's step number one uh, when you get the guitar, and then we're going to jump into Workbench. We tested this, and... Uh, that's a really good point you just made because I, I had the same problem myself. Uh, I, I plugged it in. I'm like, okay, nothing's happening. And then I thought, I just went to my instinct that, hey, guitar pedals need to have an input plugged in before they power up. So maybe it's the same thing. Yeah. And it, yeah. And it worked. So that yeah, was cool. You're, you're right. But, you know, it, that is, uh, it takes a minute sometimes. So are you, I um, think by glancing over there, you're seeing Workbench okay? I'm seeing it. Everybody else, can you guys tell us if you're seeing Workbench? Okay, so I this, think it's up there. Cool. All right, so this is the main screen. Uh, on the left hand side, you have uh, basically all of your presets. Uh, they're named kind of specifically to, to what, how they come from the factory. T models, Telecaster, Spank is a Strat, Lester's Les Paul, and so forth. Uh, 
but you can customize every slot. You're not locked in. If you know, like custom one and team all the right beside each other. I don't, I don't use Telecaster a lot. So before Helix came out, which makes it easier to flip things around and choose, I would like move my acoustic bank so I could just get to that really quickly. So you can move things around. Um, you can select copy and paste to, to move things around that way. Um, you know, you rename things, whatever you want. So then you get over here to the main screen. You can, this is, they give you a couple ways to do things. You can choose your body with this drop down here or they have the carousel. If you remember back in the old, you know, pod farm days, uh, <laughs> they were fond of these carousel graphics. Um, so you can do it either way, but you can choose your guitar body. Uh, you can choose your pickups, which pickups are on, uh, you know, the positioning, you can move them, you know, forwards and backwards. You can angle them. You can set the output level. Um, you can change if it's series or parallel. Um, so basically what that means, parallel would be both pickups running more or less independently. Series is one pickup running into the other. Uh, you can change the polarity, make them reverse the polarity if you want to do that. Um, and the way I look at this, and I don't know if I'm technically right, but this seems to be how it works, is I look at the level as kind of like, I think it was like preamp gain in a sense. So if I want a, just a hotter sounding guitar, I will use this level control here for the pickups. So that's going to hit the front of the amp a lot harder then and give you more overdrive and gain and whatnot. That's the way I think about it, right? Yeah. Uh, so down here with the preset volume, it's like the channel volume on Helix. So you can run things as hot as you want up here or as low, whatever. And this preset volume is, is what you're going to use to set the overall level um, of, of your pre whichever preset you're on. And for those folks that, that really like the magnetic pickups, you can do a cool thing. You can, for each slot, you can blend, you can blend in a certain amount of the uh, magnetic pickups. Right now I have it set all the way to model, but if I go this way, it's magnetic and any point in between. So that is, that is a really cool feature. And you know, it's funny. I, when I first got the Variax, I just plugged it into a preset and I was jamming with it with the magnetic pickups and it sounded amazing. It, okay. it, I, I, I don't even know what pickups are in it. Um, but man, it just, it was great right out of the box. So, yeah, I mean, James Tyler is, you know, he designs great guitars. Um, and the pickups are good. The pickups are, are good in, in the 69 model as well. Um, I kind of wish I had the, the three single coal version, but anyway, uh, this, it, it all sounds good, but so that's kind of, and you'll notice now I made a change. I just dragged this back, but you'll notice now over here, this is in red with an asterisk. Gotcha. That, that is just telling me that something has changed. If I want to save it or, and yeah, save it's kind of the wrong term. If I want to send it to the guitar, because you can save just like you can export patches from Helix. But if I just want to send this to the guitar, I'll upload the Variax. If I do a bunch of wacky things and move stuff around and, you know, just do weird stuff, you know, I, I don't, that's all out of whack now. I can download from Variax and that'll pull what's in Variax back down to the work pitch software. Oh, um, okay, cool. Fills right down to the start. It never does that. <laughs> <laughs> it knows it, it knows on live stream. But anyway, you get the idea. That's how that works. Um, so you can actually put a pickup on top of the bridge, as I, I, I noticed. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it sounds about as good as you would expect it to sound. Good. Yeah. You can. Uh, and one of the things that, that I like to do that I've talked about in some of my videos, depending on the sound I'm going for, like in this one, I actually have two pickups stacked. They're running in parallel. So some guy posted on my video to, to correct me that I didn't have a proper understanding of how this would work in the real world. I don't care how this would work in the real world. I, I'm just going by what it ends up sounding like. But isn't that the whole point of this technology is to get rid of the real world, right? I got these guitars on the wall back there that are the real world, but I, I want something that maybe is going to do something different than that, right? Exactly. So, you know, I'm like, I don't care. So I like it. It sounds good. So like right now I have two, one single coil on top of the other uh, in a neck, neck position. So... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a lot of string noise. I'll try to remember to turn that down before I play. Um, but if I take one of the pickups off, I get a little more of a milder sound. So it's kind of subtle. When you turn the pick, you, had, you were really channeling a Hendrix vibe there when you turn the yeah. one pickup off, right? Yeah, it, kind of more that natural strat sound. So yeah. my, my custom bank is kind of a, 
like if I could build my dream guitar. Um, I have the Strat bank if I want to do straight Hendrix. I have the Les Paul bank if I want to do just straight Zeppelin. But this bank is is like a Strat neck, um, a Strat in the. Uh, let me. Uh, like I said, it never it never messes up, but it knows I'm on live stream. <laughs> um, hmm. Let me uh, let me close this out and then uh, see, let me see what that'll do. All right, we're we're rookies at this, right? Yeah, this is this is already going way better than I thought it would. <laughs> I'm to figure out how to anyway, let me reopen my workbench and then. Um, yeah, for sure, man. No worries. A little word too. It, we Chad and I both talked, and we decided to do this on Valentine's Day to see how many uh, relationships we could split up by having people join us in the live uh, stream. So yes, no, so that's not that's know. not true at all. Let us know in the chat how that's going. <laughs> yeah, we actually didn't dawn us till today till some people started posting messages saying, "Hey, hey, dummies! It's uh, it's Valentine's Day. I'm going out with my wife. I can't watch." <laughs> Jake, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Yeah, you still okay. having? Uh, okay. I, I was rebooting the the uh, Helix, and uh, okay, for some reason the audio cut out, even though it wasn't uh, it wasn't set as my default audio device to begin with. But yeah, no, you're good, man. I can hear you. Yeah, just whenever. Cool. Uh, strange. I don't know. Oh, there we go. All right, now we're now we're back in action. Now let me see if I can get the screen back shared. It's always fun to learn in front of the live audience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's what this whole thing is, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, okay, we're, can are you able to see it now? Er, er, Eric just Eric just said in the chat that uh, V Day actually stands for Variax Day. So, absolutely, that's what we I, thought. So, I, 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 I thought we're doing this. What what idiots we were to find out later it was actually Valentine's Day. Our fault. Know. Sorry. Who who knew? Um, yeah. Are you? Will you be? Will you be my very ex? I will be your very ex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is the is the very um, workbench showing up? We're good screen? now. Yeah, man. We're okay. we're we're good. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll go. But get back to where we left off. Um, so you can also come across the string. You can change string volume. Now, one of the things that was uh, talked about, and uh, I believe it was talked about in two point eight, if I'm not imagining this, was you'll be able to control string volume per snapshot. I think that was, I think that that's going to be in 2.8. I believe it is. Yeah. I, I didn't pay that much attention to that because at that point I didn't have a very X, but I do believe that that was uh, one of the features. Yeah. So the cool thing about that is like when I was earlier, I was playing like that open G thing. A lot of times, you know, the Keith Richards method, they'll just take the sixth string off because that way you have a low G and with the fifth string. So I can save a preset on here like that, but once this update comes out in Helix, I can just do it in a snapshot and not have to, to worry about saving a preset to do that. Oh, that's um, gonna be amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, I saw a really funny comment on the Line 6 group that somebody says, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna basically turn off all the strings but their uh, B string, and then just play like the sloppiest version of Thunderstruck ever. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was that. I thought that is just the best comment ever. That was that, classic. I can't remember who said it, but that that works. That, yeah, <laughs> that's, pretty good. that's pretty good. Um, so down here in, in the string section, you can um, you can go to manage, and uh, I don't have any anything saved, but you can actually um, you can rename and you can save. So there are, I think, was it one, two, about ten or twelve slots. So you can save a whatever um, custom tunings you might want. And then if, if you use a lot of them, you can actually save them and then just bring them in into the guitar as, you know, if a gig calls for certain things, you can use this to manage and bring them back. Now with, with Helix and Snapshot Control, um, it kind of makes this a moot point because if you have a Helix, if you don't, this is important, but if you have a Helix now, you can use Snapshots to do all this stuff. So um, Right, got, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, so you don't have to do that. So when you come over to POTS, um, Volume and tone control. You can change the resistance and taper. Um, the one thing. Oh, that's I, wild! I didn't, I didn't even look at that. That's uh, that's incredible. Yeah. So the cool thing about this is um, the tone control control resistance gives you, in a sense, a little bit of EQ control. And what I mean by that is, if you go in one direction, it'll it'll cut chop some high end off. 
and mm. vice versa. So when the new firmware came out, there's been a lot, there was just a lot of fuss about the strap model, which I, I have no problem with anyway. But one of the things was people thought it was kind of bright. So um, if I, you know, if I, I'll just show you the extremes. So if I go all the way up to here, um, it, it will get kind of bright. Let me, uh, let me get back into a standard tuning. <laughs> and then if I go all the way to the other end, it's kind of smoother, rolls off some of that high end. Yeah, huge difference. Yeah, so if people complain about the strap being bright. Well, right here's a way to kind of roll off some of that high end. I found around 100K seems to work. Without having to get your soldering iron out and putting a resistor in there or something, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that, that was kind of a cool workaround. Um, after kind of playing around with it. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the bulk of workbench. That is um, really cool, man. That is wild. Yeah. Incredible. So, um, what I'll do is I'll come down here. Um, I don't even know what I have saved down here, but we'll, we'll just kind of make something real quick. Um, let's see, we'll do a firebird. Um, okay. I got a question for you. I have yeah. all these, these new Yamaha guitars behind me. Uh, how do I go about selling them all now? There is a website called Reverb.com. Okay, okay, good. good. That, let me go sign up as an affiliate, and I will have a link that you can use. For this <laughs> and you know what? That's the total total joke. I absolutely love all my guitars, but I mean, oh, I, I bet, I bet. So uh, let's just do something really weird. What would it sound like to uh, to take a a Firebird and put a Telecaster neck pickup on it? You know. <laughs> Turns out it'll sound like that. So cool, man. Uh, we can do the strat. Or we can go the other way and do something more jazzy. That's wild. Just crazy. You know, and, and really the possibilities are literally, well, not about literally, but quite possibly endless. Um, and even from here, we can change positions. We can do, you know, wow. re-angle re stuff. You can do the, the level outputs. We can boost the level, pull it back to the bridge, have it angled like a strap. Whoops, I forgot I had snapshot control on. <laughs> so <laughs> when I change to that snapshot, let me uh, switch to stop box mode where I can uh, make some changes without that happening. <laughs> So that's a P90 on top of a humbugger. Right now, right now the humbugger's off. Oh, okay, okay. Let's, let's turn it on and see what see what we get. So they're in, they're out of phase. <laughs> yeah. Out of phase. So let's let's swap that. A little more aggressive, and then we could run them in series to kind of get an even thicker sound. <laughs> Amazing. So another cool thing, you know, I found when doing this uh, tone control trick. So I can um, I can now if I want that kind of volume rolled off sound. Now there is a tone control, but if I have two pickups on and I, I can actually use this and get kind of that a little bit more of that woman, woman tone. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. Bring these back up. Uh, turn them back into uh, neck pickups. So, kind of that old cr cream, uh, Eric Clapton cream type tone, eh? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that whole thing. Nice. And really, you know, I can, that was kind of just changing this value. I can go to the other extreme and make it much brighter. So that's that's a cool little trick. Once I figured that out, that was kind of a game changer of workbench uh, to be able to do that. Um, you can do all kinds of other stuff. Um, let's see. Where's the... Uh, I'm trying to see where I had a sitar saved. I thought I had it saved somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So you can do the whole electric sitar if you need to do some 
Ravi channeling Shankar. your inner Ravi Shankar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, couldn't even touch being able to play that stuff, but no, it's yeah. You need the, you need the quarter tone frets and, and whatnot. To... Exactly. I'm not, I'm not microtonal enough. Um, so, you know, you got the resonator stuff. Which to me sounds pretty, pretty great. That's, uh, that's really good, man. I can just sort of hear a dire straits, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, yeah. thing coming off of that right yeah and then you can go to an open tuning that is totally wild man actually one of the ones i'm i'm really excited about diving into when i have a chance is the baritone yeah yeah i i um i don't think i have a baritone tuning set right now because i've overwritten the slots with some different stuff i'm using but that is absolutely true i've done that on recording uh and dropped it down to a baritone tuning uh i i'll use snapshots to uh just have a you know i can just hit a snapshot and it'll go right to it that's awesome um, yeah um so it's just i know you're a new variax user and i'm throwing a lot of information out um is there anything that's popped up any any questions that Oh man, no, I, I mean, this is, this has been great because it's just showing me around what the possibilities are. And I'm sure there's, you know, I, I'm a total, you know, late to the game on this by, by all, by all means. Right. But yeah. it's great to see the software being broken down like that and to see what the possibilities are. It's really, really wild. And uh, that is, that is so cool. Actually, let's jump back to the chat. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll see who, yeah. cause I, I've noticed a couple uh, questions come whipping by here. Yeah. Uh, Brad Miller. Hey, Jason. Greetings from Tampa. Hey, Brad. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Jason Ryerson. Thank you for stopping by. Um, so I, I apologize in advance if I miss anybody's names here. Uh, Lars Guitar. Thank you. Um, a lot of people saying that they're on the West Coast and their wives aren't home from work yet, so they're able to get away with this. So that's good. That's I never even thought of that. That's good. Yeah. Mick McLaughlin, hey buddy, he says uh, she's actually happy to get rid of him. So that's 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 well, good or bad, I guess. However you look at it. That's right. All about perspective. <laughs> that's right. Uh, uh, John Eldridge, hey buddy, he says since my wife bought me my very act, she's glad I'm watching this. So that's good. Cool. Um, Kurt Pear, Jason, are you switching? with the helix feet um i can't answer that because i'm not doing anything but sitting here sipping my drink i think chad is switching you were switching snapshots with your feet between a lot of those except at the end there you were just making changes within workbench right 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 and for all the example stuff was all snapshot based um and then once i went into workbench it was a little more manual but since you brought that up um i can share the the uh helix hx edit and kind of go through setting it up on that side Let's do that in a minute. I'll just go through the chat here. And that's an absolutely amazing. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay. Eric uh, Broadbent says uh, to mention to Chad that he does a custom tuning for his Eddie Van Halen uh, preset where he's a half step down, but he has a weird tuning where a few strings are just a few cents flat on purpose. Okay. So that's really cool. And then yeah. uh, Kurt Pear said, that's really neat. He'd love to see it. And Eric actually shared um those settings in the chat for anybody who's interested uh e flat minus nine b flat minus nine g flat minus three and so on you can see it on there so that's cool thanks so much eric appreciate that but Very cool. um alec Bourne says the other question that comes up all the time is which model variax to get on the fly jason which would would will you get well i had the choice to get what i wanted um and this is just me guessing really because i i hadn't tried any of them up until now but i i chose the uh jtv 59 which uh really nice i love it, it it's got a beefy neck on it did you find that chad yeah absolutely it feels like a 50 style les paul neck to me absolutely and again i'm not saying that in a negative way it's just no. it actually feels different than any other les paul style guitar i've had in, in that it it does have that beef to the neck and at first i went wow that's that's but in a couple of days i've been playing it i really like it so yeah. um i mean the downside is i love to play tram a lot of times so it doesn't have that obviously uh, so, I mean, basically, you know, I guess you're looking at, do you want something like a shuriken, which is more of a modern, uh, maybe, dare I say, metal style guitar versus a Strat style guitar, which is what the 69 that you're playing, or do you want the 59? So, I mean, that's a, that's going to be a personal preference thing. I think uh, from what I can tell with the quality of the 59, it's extremely well built. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. So I think you'd be happy with that. And I'm guessing all the other ones would be 
similar. I did try a shuriken actually out at uh, at Nam, and I thought it was great. So yeah, um, I, I agree with that. Um, and I played an eighty nine as well. I know Eric has the eighty nine, and to me, all all the JTV stuff and the shuriken I, I think is great. Um, I I have a fifty nine and a sixty nine, and people say, well, why do you have two? Well, live playing, anything can happen. You can break a string. Something can go wrong. And I mean, that, that happens. Um, so I like having both. And sometimes I like the feel of, of a Les Paul scale, Les Paul feel guitar. And yeah. sometimes I like the feel of a strap. Um, so well, actually, actually answer me this. The, the, the little bit that I played around with it when I had something more of a strat sound and I was playing this guitar with a Les Paul feel, it actually does a weird thing in your brain. It does. <laughs> that I'm going, okay, this sounds like a, a strat or a telly, but it sure as heck doesn't feel like it. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong at all. Um, it, it's weird. I have an easier time playing Les Paul sounds on the 69 than Strat sounds on the 59. Purely mental. Purely I would mental. believe that. Yeah, I would totally yeah. believe that for sure. Yeah. Um, what's another question here? Lars Guitar says, when you upload to the Variax, does it do it? Does it do every guitar at once or just the one you have highlighted? Well, that I'll have to throw over to Chad. So yeah, there there is an upload and then there's an upload all. So the upload all is exactly what it sounds like. And there's 60 presets. It can take a minute. So the upload is just what you have highlighted, but you can select multiple. So if you have five or six, you can select those and send them up, which is much faster than sending all 60, especially when you've, you've only changed three, four or five. So to answer this question, the, the upload to Variax button is just what's highlighted. Upload all sends them all. Awesome. Good. And I think actually, um, let me see here. Paul Terrio says, Chad is shredding tonight. Yes, he is. He sounds great. Uh, Mick McLaughlin says, at large guitar, you can upload all to Variax or single. So that's awesome. Um, Eric at EVH and Gear TV says, like you say about knowing pedals and amps in the real world, if you know pickups, this could help as well in Workbench. And that's, I would assume that's absolutely right. Uh, as yeah. you're creating these, if you know what a P90 sounds like and you know the sound you're after, you're going to be able to instinctively kind of go to that knowing that that's what you're chasing, right? Absolutely. And, but it also goes the other way, too. Um, I sold one of my older, uh, I was like a, the Variac 600 before the JTVs came out. I sold it to someone who was a fairly beginner guitar player. And I explained it to him this way. I said, look, you may end up wanting a Telecaster, wanting a Strat, wanting a whatever. But this guitar, if, if the only thing it does for you is lets you kind of experience and feel and hear what these different guitars sound like what these different pickups sound like even if down the road you decide okay i'm a telly guy that this guitar is a great way to sample all this stuff absolutely uh, yeah and then for I me agree. it's ended up being my end all be all for the most part but but uh, it got kind of it goes in both directions i think yeah, no, absolutely i i, I would agree with that for sure um what else here um Alex Bourne says it can do either. You can save individual. Okay, individual, same answer to the same question. John Eldridge says, can you program the Helix to switch to different guitars with snapshots? Yes. Brian, absolutely. I figured that was the answer. Yep. Eric says, Junior does a lot of slipknot in the baritone tuning. That's awesome. Cool. And actually, thanks, Eric, for answering John Eldridge's question before we got to it. Uh, and Mick McLaughlin does the same. Uh, Craig Tyler asks, if Workbench works with any Variax guitar. Um, Yes. Uh, the reason I hesitate when I answer that is because if you go back to the pre-JTV, there is an older version of Workbench. The Workbench HD works with all the James Tylers, the Shuriken, the Standard, anything that's on firmware 2.0 and above. Okay, um, awesome. So pre, you know, pre, um, uh, you know, pre-JTV, there's a different work. It's actually cool. I was talking to uh, Jason Lynn from Line Six at Nam, and he did the the artwork for the graphics for the original workbench. And it was cool because it had the shape of the Variax, but when you did Les Paul or Strat, it was all contained in the shape of the Variax because they couldn't, uh, the way I understood it, for legal reasons, they couldn't show an actual Les Paul, an actual Strat. Uh, so that was kind of neat. I really liked those, those graphics from the old workbench, but um, that's just an aside. The answer to the question is yes, all, all Variax guitars can work with workbench depending on which one you have is just which version of workbench. Oh, that's awesome. And see, these are things I have no idea about. So thank you, Chad. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> and uh, Mick McLaughlin says, yes, you can. John Eldridge, you can also disable things in the very axe from the Helix, like disabling the pickup selector, volume tone. Yes, true. Um, 
Jim Lund says, I don't think Workbench works with the Variax base. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that's probably correct. I, I was not thinking about the base. Um, also, let me think. There was, and I did own this guitar. There's an the acoustic line. I had an acoustic 700, but I th I'm trying to remember. Hmm. I don't remember if, if it worked with Workbench. I don't know that it did. Okay. I can't, I can't remember. They're not in production anymore anyway. But. There you go. Um, Sean Hayes, does pickup config of Variax make any difference to model pickup sound? Um, is the question, does, does the configuration of the physical magnetics? I, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe he means just select doing using the pickup selector. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but. Okay. Well, to answer that, that's, that's one difference between the 59 and almost all the others is that most all the others have a five way switch. Um, with the 59 having the Les Paul style three-way, you actually depress the um, alt tuning knob to get to positions two and four. And it, it'll it turn blue so you know you're in that mode. I noticed that. And what I noticed was that, for instance, on a Les Paul, it would go between like a Les Paul Jr. with P90s versus a Les Paul with humbuckers. Correct. Yeah. So right. That, which is a really cool feature. Yeah. So because a Les Paul doesn't have a two and four, they, they threw in something a little different. That's a really that's a really well thought out thing. I thought my, my, yeah. at my first my first kind of uh, glance at it was really cool. Uh, Robert Appel says I have the JTV sixty nine single coil on the bridge. I think as far as Variax goes, Variax presets sound the same, but when you play Variax magnetics, it will sound like the model you picked. I think that's a fair statement, right? I mean, I noticed when I played the magnetics on this, it it had more of that Les Paul type sound too. Oh, hundred percent, so, yeah, yeah, 100%. which is really cool, right? It's yeah. that's that as you would expect it to be. Uh, uh, Eric says another you can do is lock stuff, get a sound you like and disable pickup position, switch tone knob, etc. So nothing yes. takes you away from your magic sound, which is really cool. Yep. Um, Shekius, I hope I pronounced that right, says, hi guys, I was playing my new 89F and I love it. The only thing I did on Workbench was reduce the string volume by 2 dB and now sounds great. More sustained, better palm meeting response. Awesome. awesome. It's great. Great to hear the different people's uh, yeah. experiences with it. You know, one thing I did forget to mention in uh, is Workbench, per preset, you can change the string volumes in the preset, but there is a, in the edit menu, there's a global uh, global level. And when I first got my 69, I was getting like a uh, clipping or distortion on the third string. And when I really dug in um, and, and it drove me nuts, I couldn't figure out what it was. And, and eventually I can't remember if I contacted support or found out on the forum, but I went there and lowered the third string, but by a couple of DB and completely solved the problem. So if you're having any kind of issues, if something's really weird, that's one of the first places I tell people to start is adjust those global uh, string levels and it can get rid of some weirdness that's going on. That's awesome. That's great stuff to know. Uh, Eric says you can test a pickup before you buy one. Exactly. That's, uh, exactly. Yep. that's so amazing. Um, do, 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 do. Paul Terrio says, I'm selling my Roland GR55 for a Variax. Good, 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 good. Look at yeah, that. I, eh? I used great. A, um, a VG88 system before Variax came out. Um, so I, I used to do the whole 13 pin pickup. And um, for the time, you know, it, it is what it is. It worked. But um, he will love the Variax coming from the 13 pin setup. Man, I've, I've only had very uh, small amount of time with it. And actually, the, the great thing was I got to give the uh, wonderful folks at Line 6 another plug here. Um, I also received this the same day. Very the cool. New, the new G10S. I did a couple videos already on my channel um, about it. I am loving, loving, loving this. It's uh, cool. really built like a tank. You could almost like drive a truck over this and yeah. um, some great features. And yeah, so anybody looking for a wireless, give uh, Line 6 some love. I think we got to stop for a second and, and say say something else. And I'm sure Eric and you and Johnny and Steve and everybody will agree with what I'm about to say. Anybody looking to buy any Line 6 products, um, I personally, and I'm not just saying this because I have any affiliation with them now. The only reason I have any affiliation with them is because I started using their products and found out how incredible not only the products were, but the team is. Um, I think you're going to be hard pressed to find a company out there that has such a friendly, um, what are the, I don't even know what the right words are, just a team that is going to go above and beyond the call of duty for their users, for their customers. Uh, whether it be customer support or listening to 
um, customer feedback about a product. And the G10S is a perfect example. Um, they took things that people were not happy about with the G10, let's say, that only being able to power it via USB or charge it via USB, and they put a 9-volt adapter plug on it, you know, just because they heard so much. Th these guys are hands down one of the best companies out there, not only as far as products, but as far as, as customer support and just dealing with folks. I, I, I have to say that and I, because I believe it from the bottom of my heart. And I think most of you guys out there would, would, that have experience with them would agree with it as well. I, I just to echo that sentiment. I think you're spot on. Um, you know, shout out to, you know, Frank Rashad is maybe the, the best customer relations person I've ever seen. <laughs> hands down, hands he, down. I don't know. I don't know when he actually sleeps, but that's a I, different, I don't, uh, I don't. He, he gets up in California earlier than I do my time. I mean, it's, I know, I know, you know it's crazy. I wake up and he's three hours behind already at the gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, having gone to NAM now a couple of times and really having met practically all of the staff, you know, in your mind, you think, uh, you know, I used, I've been using line six since 98. And you think, here's these, these guys probably who are in suits and they're working for this company and, and you meet them. And it's just like, they're just, they're guitar players and musicians. They're just, they're great guys. You know, they understand. And that's the difference, uh, you know, going back, the guy that mentioned the, using the Roland stuff. Um, I don't anything against Roland or Boss, but when I've used their products, it feels very much like that we've designed it the way it should be. You, you know, you do it our way. And with line six, like you said, they listen. And, yeah. and they listen to their user base and they adjust things accordingly. And, you know, the very acts to pull it back in a little, the very acts just works. It feels like a guitar. The controls are like a, a guitar. So there's no disconnect. You're not having to, you don't feel like you're, you know, trying to fly a spaceship. It's you're playing a guitar. You want to go to the bridge, the neck, you want to use the tone control, the volume, everything works like it should. So absolutely. Uh, so well thought out. Yeah. Yeah. I just had to say that because I, I really, truly, I, I won't, I won't back up or tout any companies that I don't believe in their product, you know, whether it's something like I was mentioning a simple pedal board that I have coming. I've had many pedal boards over the years. This one, truly, I went, somebody's got it right. And I want to, I want to hook my wagon to that because that is a great product, right? Uh, Paul Shedden from Mission Engineering, they're doing the same thing. You know, he has these wonderful foot switches and expression pedals, and I have the Mission Gemini back there. There's another company, and and really good people, you know, and I think that's really important in the grand scheme of things too, that that you're dealing with good people, not just, uh, yeah. you know, a company who doesn't care about their their user after they get your, uh, your money, you know? Absolutely, so. and in this day and age of social media, the fact that Line 6 is so engaged, you know, again, particularly Frank, I mean, he's always, I don't like, when does he sleep? He's always responding. Yeah. And um, it, it's just so forward thinking, I believe, for a company um, Abs to, absolutely. to treat their customers as, as peers almost. Um, yeah. And not like, oh, we got your money. So uh, come back when you need to buy something else. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, back to the chat here. He said, uh, Eric says, hey, everyone, we have 47 plus watching. Can we give our panelists some more thumbs up? I'm trying so hard to be like uh, a nocturnal butterfly, but these guys are killing it tonight. Thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate the support, buddy. And uh, I, the only reason I can even do this is because I watch so much of Eric's channel and I have some sort of idea how to do this. That's He's he's my mentor. He, <laughs> hey, uh, he, hey, he's the pro, man. He, he is it, what's the wax on, wax off kind of uh, karate, karate kid thing? Is he, that, he's uh, our He's our Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's new nickname is Mr. Miyagi. Sorry, yeah. Eric. That... <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, boy. I think I just jumped down here. Uh, da, 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 da. What do we have? Uh, Kurt Perry says, I downloaded Chad's patch from Eric's show and then from his YouTube channel. He said he moved the acoustics to the telly section, but I found it was in the jazz section on my shuriken. Why? Um, uh that's a good question. Um, I, I had at one point moved it to the telly section when uh, snapshots came on board. I ended up moving it back just to the acoustic section um, because I no longer had to worry about the convenience of the physical controls. Helix was doing that. Um, I would say just it's, it's a pretty simple fix. Just go into, either go into Workbench and, and just copy and paste and move things to where you want them. Um, or if, as we'll jump into HX Edit here in a second, you can just tell HX Edit where to go. Where to, where to point to. So um, there's a couple workarounds there. Okay, and sorry cool. for 
confusion that that's I, I kind of hesitate to give out my complete bundle <laughs> of of my Varix because it's always in flux, it's always changing, um, and there's always weird things I'm working on. Someone might pull it up and go, "What in the world is what is that?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. It might be a work in progress. So uh, John Eldridge says, "I still have a Variax 300 in the closet. Will this work with the Helix? Okay." Um, <clears throat> Not exactly. I mean, it, it will. You can connect it with the Variax VDI cable, to my understanding. Uh, it will power it, to my understanding. Um, you will not be able to have any two-way communication, uh, such as snapshots changing settings and that sort of stuff. Um, from what I've read on the group, that, that seems to be how, how that goes. But uh, Good to know. Uh Led Zepp Skewel says, I just opened the box of my 89F. What are the steps of setting it up? Now, that might be a loaded question. I don't know. Um, well, in terms of, of Workbench and, and everything, it, download Line 6 Monkey from their support site. Um, one thing, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but, but when you first get it, you do need to connect with the USB dongle first. You can do uh, Workbench through the Helix, but you cannot do firmware updates or driver updates through Helix. So uh, do that first. Connect, like we talked about earlier, make sure you have a quarter inch and the, the uh, digital jack connected. Connect that to your computer. Run Line 6 Monkey. It'll tell you if your drivers are up to date. It'll give you, you know, it'll pull Workbench down for you. After you get all that done, you can pretty much just start connect. If you have a Helix, just connect through Helix. As we talked about before the show, you can open up Helix and Workbench. It all work, runs through Helix. Awesome. Great. Um, Kurt Pear says, I can't figure out how to move the acoustics back to the acoustics selection on the knob. So op open up Workbench. <clears throat> uh, basically, I, I don't know if you can copy and paste multiple presets. At worst, you know, you can do one by one, but just go up, select one, go up to edit, copy preset, go down to acoustic paste. Um, and, and that should do the trick. You can just move them that way. Awesome. Uh, Brian Adams, our buddy Brian, says the L6 products bring you in, but their team makes you feel good about what you bought and supports you along the way. Exactly. And they're, you know, Very true. Could, couldn't say it better myself. Eric, uh, Kurt Pear says Frank is the greatest. We all agree on that. Uh, EVH, uh, Eric at EVH says, I agree. I'm waiting for Ashton Kutcher to pop out and say you're being punked to the service is that good. And <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty true, yeah. Um, sorry, what did I lose here? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, uh, trying to see the the. Thank you for doing variant. the chat, by the way. <laughs> That's oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to figure my way through this without, I keep bumping things and getting bumped all over the place. But uh, Mick McLaughlin says, question for Chad. I have snapshots in the Helix for capo tunings, but occasionally notice some strange artifact noise coming through and it sounds really bad. Is there anything you can do about it? Um, what I would say is this, I find the best results going plus or minus uh, two frets, um, three I can get away with. If you capo five frets, six, seven frets, you have to kind of be careful how you play. Um, we do, uh, in the band, I mean, we do a cover of Hotel California. So I do a seventh fret capo acoustic guitar with one snapshot and then go to a Les Paul with an amp on another. It works great live. If I sit and listen to it very, very closely, I, going up that far, I can hear I can hear a few artifacts and a little warbling here and there. Um, it, it's just kind of the nature of it. Uh, they're... they're you know, it, it can do it, but there are limitations the farther you go out. Um, yeah, that makes sense though, right? I mean, yeah, a lot of these yeah. things, when you push them to their limits, they are going to, you know. You know, and the hard, you know, the one thing to consider, I mean, the hardware itself is from basically 2010. That's when the JTV line launched. Right. Um, so when you take all that into consideration, it's pretty, pretty crazy how far you can push it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, interesting question. Sean Hayes says, could you change the neck of it or will it remove something important? Change the neck? Uh, well, you know, I've changed. You did that with yours, right? Is, yeah, yours not a, is it a warmoth neck on yours? It's, or? it's a warmoth neck, stainless steel frets. Um, this is a neck. So I've, I've got a Stevie Ray signature strat I've had since 92. Uh, I'd kind of worn the frets off and, and to the point where I ended up just swapping the neck. Uh, for this neck, uh, and then a couple of years ago, I thought, well, that guitar is basically sitting in the closet. So I put the original neck back on that and moved this over. Um, 
and and yeah, it's there was nothing wrong with the original neck. The only thing I didn't love about it that was the nut width was kind of narrow, and I have big fat fingers, <laughs> so having a guitar with a wider nut width is a little more comfortable for me. But uh, the '69, you can any any guitar that fits a standard strap pocket, neck pocket will or any neck will work. So that's awesome. Um, one thing to note: the the bolt pattern is, is three quarters of the way the same as a strap, but uh, one is a little different. So if you're going to order one from Warmoth, I just suggest getting it blank and uh, just having the holes drilled when you get it. Yeah, makes sense. How about we do that HX edit thing? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So let me uh, pull this over. Okay, can you see it? All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, oops. So basically, let me go to uh, just the kind of the baseline here. Uh, you want to make sure that the Variac settings are per preset. Um, and everything that is in, is in brackets is snapshot controlled. And the way you do that in edit is just right click and choose snapshots. So um, I don't really, I don't force the volume knob. Um, what that means is I, I still, Eric was talking earlier, you can lock all that out. I have it set up to where I, I basically just use it live where I can work the volume and tone control. Uh, down here, I have the tuning set to custom. And here's where all the fun stuff happens. Um, you're able to just use the sliders to set, you know, to set whatever, whatever you want. Um, as I step through the snapshots, you'll see it change. It changes the guitar model. It changes the, uh, the tuning. You know, there's one for the acoustic is in drop D flat. And then there's just a standard acoustic. So and basically if and, and there's a lot of videos about snapshots but you can you can rename and 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 do what you want on the snapshots um you know there's the base it's just an octave down um so it's it's pretty straightforward there's not a lot of you know intricacies in the programming on this side um you do have the ability to choose all of the guitar models or preset slots in the very x so one thing it doesn't it's going to always say the name of the preset. So T model, even though I at one point had my acoustic bank here, it still said T model. I just had to remember that, you know, that's, that's what was there. It wasn't actually, um, you know, it wasn't actually the uh, telecaster models, but otherwise that that's, that pretty much does it. You know, you just... so, so sorry, Chad, can you load up like a telly in place of a strat model or. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can use any of those banks for anything you want. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can use, so the, on the HX edit side, it's, it's going to recall the names of whatever is stock or factory, but um, I can go into workbench and put anything in there, but, but yeah. So now we're on a, a telecaster. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to, you know, make it a Les Paul, I just pull it down to, to the Lester bank. <laughs> you know, so I can assign it any, anything really. Um, nice. Small string. small string electric. So, yeah, it, it's very straightforward on on the uh, HX edit side. Um, there's not a lot of, like I said, there's not a lot of menus and depth to go into, but this is deceptively powerful. You know, as we talked about earlier, being able to to just change tunings and guitars on the fly. I mean, that was just unthinkable. Um, just. That's totally insane. The, the, the tuning thing is crazy. I mean, and then with 2.8 coming out, like you said, the added functionality is going to be incredible. It's, it's right. amazing. Uh, and one question you, you had on the, when you shared that we were going to be doing this, someone was asking about being able to control um, pitch via an expression pedal. Right, yes. Um, so I experimented with that today because I've had that question before, and it is technically possible. You can come over here and assign this to a snapshot. It just doesn't sound good. It's really it, it glitches when it get, when it jumps uh, pitches. So I, I think I just made a rhyme there. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so in concept, yes, you can, but uh, it it doesn't it doesn't work very well. Not in a live practical application. Uh, you know, so but who knows? Who knows what'll come down the road? But uh, for right now, that is one limitation. But that that's not a that's, that's a very small limitation compared to what, what you have available. Well, yeah, that's a pretty, I would say, classify that under a very specialty request, let's call it, right? Like, exactly, yeah. Would be very cool, but I mean, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker if that's a little bit glitchy, right? Uh, yeah, considering 99.9% .9 of guitars can't do what a B-Bender does. Exactly, yeah, without drilling and routing and uh, exactly. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. That's great, man. So, wow, possibilities are uh, are definitely, well, seemingly endless, right? It's Yeah, you can do so much. So, you know, you can go one of two ways. You can go the direction you are talking about earlier with the dialing in of, I don't own, you know, all these guitars, so I have access to them. Or you can go the other way and go, I'm just starting out. I don't know what I like. Let me get this guitar and I can hear what all this stuff is. And I'm kind of in more to the side you would be where I go, okay, I know what I like. Um, I know what I need to accomplish at a gig and I don't want to have to carry five guitars. And, you know, some of this stuff, I can't switch guitars mid song, you know? Um, yeah. So it, it, to me, I, I, I'm so spoiled with this technology that I cannot I literally cannot imagine doing gigs without Variax at this point. And That's um, crazy. maybe I'm too dependent on it, <laughs> but um, it's just made me so content you know, well, it was so funny. I mean, over our dinners and whatnot at Nam, you kept, you know, you kept saying like, I have two guitars I bring. They're both very axes that does every yeah. gig. And I, and I kept saying, wow, that's, that's, that's great. But, and now I kind of get it right. And now that yeah. I've, I've got my mitts on one and I've, I've messed with it for very, I purposely didn't mess with this before tonight. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I downloaded the software. We kind of talked about that, HA, before I said, should I actually try to figure this out? And I said, no, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to come into it totally fresh so that you can, you know, show me what you know, because I know you're the guy with this. You know your way around this stuff like the back of your hand. And I thought that would be the coolest way to go about learning this is to hear, you know, your thoughts. And, and the real world experience, you cannot replace that somebody who's had yeah. real world experience gigging studio work everything else with with a technology or with anything you can't replace that so i can't come on here and, and answer any of these questions like you can because you've you've had your hands on these for so long right? yeah i mean I've, I've been thank you by the way but i've been uh playing variax for you know almost 14 years wow. um and as it got better particularly when the james tyler line came out is when it was like okay it's gone from a Swiss army knife. That's, that's a great thing to have at a gig To This is a legitimate replacement for everything. Um, so that, that is, that's really when it got exciting for me was when the James Tyler line. And then when the, the HD firmware came out and they added some features in workbench, which we've gone over, um, it, it was a game changer. It was really a game changer. Um, you know, when I was gigging back in the early two thousands, I had a, you know, a guitar, you know, boat with four guitars. I had, four by 12 cab, a power amp, a pedal board. I had to wheel around with a hand truck. Now I show up with at the most three gig bags. Well, my backpack for the helix and two gig bags for the guitars. And Crazy. that's it. You know, I have a rule. If it takes more than two trips to the car, it does not come with me. <laughs> that's a good rule to follow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, you know, and everyone else is setting up and miking and I'm like, I'm hooked up. I'll be over here hanging out. You, you, let me know when you're ready. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing. The setup is so simple. You know, I've been, I, I haven't been playing live for a long time, but there's a local coffee shop here. Uh, and I know the owners really well. And I frequent the place, the, the best coffee. And it's just this privately owned thing. And they've been doing this open mic night recently. And I've been getting addicted to going back out and just playing a couple tunes. And yeah. so um, I, I posted a message on my Facebook. Oh, uh, the Jeff Beck tune you did, yeah. that was awesome. Oh, thanks, wow. man. Awesome. And you know what's funny about that? I walked in with an HX stomp, wherever it is on the floor back there. I, I walk in with an HX stomp and I slap that down at my Yamaha mixer. And I, I've been bringing my, I don't know if you can see them, I have a couple of Line yeah. 6 yeah. LT2Ss back there out as PAs. And I just let them use it for the night. And I go out and I have some coffees and hang out with some good friends. It's an absolutely amazing night. I get up and I play a couple songs. And I walk in with the stomp. And I walk in with, I think last time I was playing the Pacifica that's right. Yeah. Yep. Right there. Yep. That yep. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, one cable I'm set up in five minutes. Like, not even five minutes. In, in, in yeah. two minutes, I'm set up. And I'm using my factory preset that I provided for line six for the Jeff Beck thing. And I play it. And it's, it's like, awesome. how does this, you know, and it doesn't, and, and the other thing is I'm playing to a backing track. It's not ripping anybody's face off. I'm playing at a, a comfortable volume, but I'm getting this beautiful searing Marshall tone. Yes. Uh, you know, so add the very to that, where if you were doing a full set where you needed a 335 and a Les Paul and a Tele and a Strat, you don't even have to change guitars now, right? Yeah. It's like an acoustic wow. or a resonator or a sitar. I mean, you, you, the list goes on. Right. You know, uh, the, it's, it's the, crazy. Yeah. The band I play with now, actually, um, they do an open mic night. And a few years ago, um, I think it's two or three, I don't remember, but 
couple years ago, I just went out, I had some friends that were like, oh, you should go do this open mic, you know. And it was a lot of singer songwriters, people with their acoustics. And I show up, I've got a Helix. I've got a looper, basically just it's a backing track player, essentially. Um, and I set up and do some Hendrix and stuff. And, uh, it, you know, it was, they liked it. And I got invited to, to play with the, the house band and the rest is history. It's the Muddy Creek players. Uh, we play at Muddy Creek Music Hall in Bethany, North Carolina, near Winston. And, you know, kind of the same with our group in Nam. like started playing with these guys and the first rehearsal I show up to, it's like, we've known each other forever. You know, you know, you, you know, you have lifelong friends when that type of thing happens, right? Exactly. Uh, and it's the first band I've been in. It's just, it's pretty much all fun. We're all older, you know, we're not, we're not doing it to make money. Uh, we're not trying to make it or get a deal, whatever that means these days. But uh, we're just, we just do it for the love of the music. And, uh, I gotta tell you, I, I think a really important point to make is whether you're trying to grow a YouTube channel, whether you're trying to, you know, quote unquote, make it in music. I think when you're forcing it, when you're doing things that scream out that you're trying to make it is when things don't work. It's when you just stop doing that. You just be a normal, real person who's doing it for the love of what you do. That's when people kind of wake up and notice and resonate with it because yeah. there's that there's that human quality to it and maybe that's just me but that's what i've found you know no i completely agree authenticity um i think is very important people recognize it and they recognize when you're not when you're pretending. absolutely and you know my favorite part these days of playing live music is the joy of playing on the stage with people that that i genuinely enjoy being around and care about and the joy of seeing the people in the crowd enjoying what they're enjoying being there, enjoying what we're doing and that back and forth, that synergy that happens and you feed off that and the energy is a two way. And those, mo I mean, that's, that's why I do it still. Um, I, you know, I, it's not for the free sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Or the, uh, the exposure. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Can we, yeah we can't pay you, but you can get expo exposure yeah. for fun. I'm not trying to do anything with this. <laughs> Oh man, let's go back to the chat here. We'll check it yeah. out. We've got a few more questions. Um, Kevin Busby showed up. He says, uh, "Sorry, I'm late. I need to rewatch." Thanks for showing up, Kev. That's awesome. Um, Shekia says, "Eric is the streaming Miyagi God." Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see here. Hopefully, I'm not missing anything here. But uh, oh. Da -da 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 I don't know if there's any more questions or more chatter going back and forth here. Uh, Eric says, uh, I think that is coming in 2.8. Ask Chad if that's correct, volume per string via yes. snapshot. Yes, uh, yeah, which will be great. Again, like we talked about earlier, if you were doing uh, an open G tuning and, and want to kill the six string so you can have a low G, it, you, can do, you, you can, and Stevic does this, you can do that now by building a preset in Workbench and saving it to the guitar, but it's going to be that much easier to be able to do it on the fly with snapshots where you don't have to take up, you know, save positions on on, uh, on your very axe. Right on. Nice. You don't have to remember where it is, <laughs> too, which is nice. Right. Any any other things you want to share about the very axe, or does that kind of cover the whole... Uh... The whole I, I deal. think I think that covers it uh, in terms of Variax. I, I think there's there's um, one important question left unanswered though is uh, who who do you have in the fight Sunday? The last uh -huh. and Ganu. Um, and Ganu, I think. Really? Yeah. What do you think? Interesting. I, I think Kane's the better fighter. Um, I think he is too, but it depends on whether he shows up or not. Well, if he shows up, and the other thing is if he's stubborn and wants to prove he can stand with Nganu, then he's very likely to catch that that strong right. But if, if he does what if he's smart and takes him down, I think I think he can win the fight. I think the really important point is is it's gonna give us an opportunity to sip some whiskey and solve more of the world's problems. Uh that is the most important part of it. <laughs> Which will all still be there Sunday morning when we wake up. Exactly. Yeah. Um so yeah, so this has been an amazing uh, experience talking about um, about the Variax. Now, what do you have planned for your channel? Because everybody, I got to say again, 
In the description below is a link to Chad's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, please, everybody go to it, subscribe to his channel, and watch his content. He's got great stuff on there. Uh, what do you have planned coming up? I know we discussed this a little bit yeah, at NAMM yeah. and whatnot. So I, I have a current playlist of Variax videos, which is a good place to start. What I want to do, um, and I'm planning to start filming this weekend, is, is just really do an ABC type of thing starting with physically hooking up the guitar going over any little caveats people might have showing you know going through line six monkey to get the firmware updates and then from there just really starting just going over workbench with a fine tooth comb showing some of the stuff i do um particularly the, the strat mods have gotten a really great response because people were you know i don't say unhappy but there was a lot of discussion about the strat so um, I just want to basically go A to Z and for, for people watching this, particularly that are on the uh, Variax Facebook group, if you're not, go join that because that is a great resource. But um, by all means, put post questions, tag me and say, hey, this is something that I have a question about, would like to do, you know. So um, it's going to be a little bit of what I said, trying to go step by step and, and just try to expand the knowledge and make people more and more aware of what the guitar can do. Um, and then as people, you know, bring me things that they're, they're curious about, I, I'm going to try my best to, to address those and answer those and, and try to help people out, just spread the word. That's absolutely awesome. And, you know, I've had so many people ask me over the last while about, oh, do some very videos. And honestly, go see Chad's channel for all things very I will be implementing the very into some of my dialing in videos and whatnot, like I mentioned before, in the sense that, Hey, you know, this, uh, maybe this particular tone needs a Rickenbacker. And I'll, I'll utilize that because I don't have that guitar. Um, but as far as the ins and outs of this, Chad is Mr. Miyagi of the Variax, just like <laughs> Eric is Mr. Miyagi of the live stream, right? <laughs> so, uh, and, and Frank is the Mr. Miyagi for Line 6 customer support. 100%, uh, 100%. You know, so 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 by, by no means do I want, you know, I'm probably not the guy to ask about the finer details of the Variax at this point at all. So please go to Chad's channel and he's gonna be putting some, and I hope we can do this this kind of stuff more um, you know, uh, maybe next time we'll do a stream on Chad's channel and do, do something similar like this. This was so much fun yes. and Chad and I were really excited about this leading into it. Um, just to, to be able to, you know, get, get a, get a group together and have an enjoyable, uh, relaxed hangout yeah. and, and chat very acts and chat helix and, you know, you know, and it's, it's actually, it's great. It's almost been an hour and a half. Um, which is a long live stream, but actually one of our shorter conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So I think with that, um, so as not to bore everybody to tears, um, and everybody can actually go and have a happy, uh, very day with their significant other. Is it very It is very day, right? Is that very yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they can, uh, they can go do that. I just want to thank everybody for coming out for participating in the live stream. Uh, I honestly very uh, humbled by how many people showed up. I think we had 60 people watching at one point, which is That's awesome, which is better than the three that I thought we would have. <laughs> <laughs> Any, we talk anything breaking double digits. We were going to be happy with. I, I was good with 11. Yeah. I yeah. thought mostly it was because I don't have any hair that people weren't going to show up, but anyways, apparently I was wrong. So <laughs> well, but all right. we, we balance out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I'll, uh, yeah. So anyways, thanks guys so much for, for tuning in. Uh, stay on it with me, Chad. I'll say body off the air. Yeah. That's another, that's another thing I learned from my buddy, Eric, man. Yes. I, I'm so glad I watched so much of his channel because I learned all the right things to say. So yes. I'm going to, I owe him a, I owe, Eric, I, if you're still here, man, I owe you a beer or five and uh, we'll have to make plans soon. We, that's a funny thing. I, that's a story I think we've told a bunch of times, but you know, I sent Eric a message on, uh, when I started watching his channel. I said, hey man, I noticed you're in Ontario, Canada. I said, do you mind me asking where you are? And he told me where he was. And I was like, I think we live like 40 minutes away from each other, man. So, <laughs> so anyways, cool. we've both been back and Yeah, back that's and the one thing I wish for our, our group was that we, we were closer. Um, you know, you, you guys are in Canada, Johnny's in Liverpool, yeah. Steve in New York, Brian's in Ohio, I'm in North Carolina. Um, I wish we were closer, but I'm thankful for the uh, the magic of the internet. You know, at least we it, can virt virtually hang out. 
So hopefully we can do this more often and get everybody on board, I think would be really cool. Yes. Um, and I think, I think we will definitely, I don't know, have to try maybe a meetup somewhere else uh, other than NAM to, to get together and, uh, you know, yeah. we'll see, see how that works out. We'll, 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 we'll figure something out, but, uh, Absolutely. but for yeah, now, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's, uh, it's been, it's been a blast. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much, everybody for, for coming out and, uh, I guess we'll stop the broadcast here and keep an eye out for more videos from Chad's channel. Uh, like I said, subscribe, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up with what I'm doing. I've got a lot of uh, hopefully interesting content coming up. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll try to keep it interesting. It, it always um, is. It always is. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. And uh, and we'll be hopefully back soon with uh, with some more shenanigans like this. And uh, it'll Looking be fun. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man. All right. Thanks, thanks everybody, for tuning in. All right. My pleasure, Chad. Thanks for coming, bud.